And this is a community organized event, so I would like to also to thank the Metro Toronto Dot Manager Group, the Toronto Dot Manager and the BC Summer Dot Manager Group. So those are groups run by volunteers. Uh, their main mission is to spread knowledge and deliver this content for everyone who is interested in obviously dot net in this case. Uh, and then I'd also like to ask for a round of applause for all the volunteers and the groups that are out here today. And if you read into TA, uh, we have uh, our January and February events already announced. So those are events in downtown Toronto. Uh, you can find more information about, about that uh, on the Meetup Club page. So please go check. I uh, would assume most of you are already members. Uh, to probably get videos about that. So we have Jen and Pep already announced. And in January 8th and 9th, we're going to have the midnight tour. Unfortunately, it's wait listed. So the event will be uh, in super capacity, but you can just join the wait list at Microsoft's website. Uh, who here has been to the last year's midnight tour? So, and what's up? Just a few. Okay, so in case you guys don't know, this is we have the midnight tour that just happened a few weeks ago. They go uh, on all major cities with all the same speakers delivering the same content is a free event. You just have to register two days of really good contents from the same speakers that were on the original late night. And then here's just a quick view of our agenda. We're gonna start we just had the registration. We're gonna start with the keynote and then we're gonna break this whole space into three areas. You can see the schedule for each one of those rooms outside. They are posted on the door, so please make sure arrive in time for your session. Uh, then we're going to have a lunch break around 11.45. No, sorry, 11, uh, 12.45. We're going to have a lunch break, and then we're going to have the closing session uh, after 3.30. Uh, so, we have no further ado, I would like to introduce you guys to Bruno, who's going to do the opening keynote. Thank you so much. So, again, hello everyone. My name is Bruno Juan. I'm going to give you the keynote. I'm very happy to be here. I, uh, you've probably seen me a lot of times, so I'm not going to spend uh, much time talking today, just like I was at the beginning. You also probably noticed that I've been part of the agenda because I drew the lunch at 2.45. Remember, I came from Spain. You ask me, I'll come back at 2 p.m., but because this is what we do there, but hey, I'm trying to figure out what to do. And uh, let me tell you a couple of stories of why I'm I mean, I am Microsoft Committee, I've been MVP for two and four more years, I think, third year. In the last couple of years, I was awarded in the AI category. I am not a data scientist, I am not a very smart guy, I just like <laughs> to play around with you, so I am a machine learning enthusiast, I like AI. And I really, really think that we can do a lot of things. So that's why I'm here. The ones who already know me probably know that I use, uh, I am not a very good speaker, so I rely on visual, but I am also a very good wizard, so I do a lot of crack animations, baby yoga, whatever this topic means that we are going to see today. Also, I prepared this keynote uh, to be very technical, talking about everything that we've seen in the night, everything that is new, and then I realized, hey, we have a full agenda today with a lot of very smart people talking about this, so I am not going to do that. I am going to go directly to send you my point of view, the uh, camera point of view down there. This is the agenda. Look at us, give it. Remember, as soon as we begin, we're going to do this, there are two different tracks. We are not going to record the tracks, but we are going to share the slides, so choose wisely in which one you want to do. I want to send the volunteers, also I want to send the speakers. This is people who basically spend a lot of time creating their sessions and come here and spend and share their knowledge. You see that they are also very handsome. I, I use a small picture of myself, you can see my face there, so you don't know who I am. But hey, this guy is a uh, it's a big thing for everyone because we spend a lot of time preparing these kind of things, and this is what they're doing. Also, I work in Avanat, the Orange guys, you've already seen this, we sponsor this, and uh, we are going to be in the bag if you want to come to chat with us, we are likely to do the conversation, we can explain what are we doing, we are creating, how we are doing the cloud, we are doing the AI, and we are not. Okay. Yes, I like that. 
And we, we are not doing SWAT today. Uh, instead of doing SWAT, what we are doing is uh, for every people who come to come to us, we are making a donation to a charity organization to an achievement. So if you ask me, instead of giving you a USB or a Tesla, we are going to donate a couple of dollars. I don't remember it's two, five cents to do an achievement, charity organization. So hey, okay. if you want to come to us, we're also doing the same. It makes sense. I like this instead of SWAT. And finally, a couple of announcements. A, a group of very, very smart people writes a book, the MVP AI book. This being announced this week. It's available on Amazon right now in an electronic format. Mm -hmm. Hey, do not take pictures. I am very smart. I will give you the QR code. <laughs> <laughs> As Rafi here is one of the author. This is a very good book. How many authors do we have there? 12, 10? Uh, 17 chapters written by, uh, sorry, 17 chapters written by 17 MVPs from all over the world. This is all around the world. And also, by the way, all of the profits, if you follow this book, in the, it's going to be available in paper in the next couple yeah. of weeks. Right now, some of these are in the Kindle, in Amazon Kindle. But if you want this book, uh, all of the same, all of the profits is going to be to, uh, to a charity organization. So again, you can learn and also help people doing getting this book. Uh, I really encourage you to go there and see So please buy the book, not to make me more rich person, but because the money will go to a charity. So yes, yes, I already write a couple of technical books and both my Ferraris with the technical book, you know that a technical writer gets a lot of money. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> when you write a technical book two months later, it doesn't, nobody cares about the book. This is the worst job ever. If you are writing about, I don't know, machine learning content today, and then on June gets a new version and the book is old. So the technical book writer is probably one of the worst profession ever. So if you does this, it is going to be really, really nice. So special thanks to a you know that you can do this because it's a cheap book, you're going to help and you're going to learn. So that's that's an Yes. And my, the chapter I wrote is about AI and cognitive services and Power BI, which is going to be the topic of my first session today. So if you need to learn more about it, you can have a, a good idea about this from the session, and please also write the first Yes, so if you don't want to write a book, come to the session. Please, you know, <laughs> also write it. Do both. Do And we are going to cover Rafa to, to basically to give someone a super good drink. Uh, I am going to give you the QR code for the for the wrapper right now. Once you complete your evaluation and at last come and talk to us with your evaluation in the in your hand, I will give you the URL. So that's why that's how we are doing we're trying to basically treat you to give your feedback. But you may go to one a super good drink. And that's basically it. Before we start, we have a global video. I want to play the video, uh, to play the video uh, of the global AI, and then we'll do a small keynote. Thanks, 
so much, Amy and Hank. The Global AI community was started last year with locations worldwide. This year, we're at 120 locations worldwide. We're so excited to have you here. Eric Boyd, Corporate Vice President of Azure AI. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing really, really well. Excited to be here. Really excited about how much the community has grown. It's really incredible to see in what <coughs> So who was on the way to do So I lead the Azure AI team here, and so all of the things around Azure machine learning, our bot framework, our suite of cloud services, and put that in cloud search, all of those things are. So there was a lot of cool things that came out at Ignite. What is our strategy for Azure AI control? So when we think about what we're going to try to do with AI, it often always starts with research. And so we're really fortunate to have Microsoft research, and we've been investing in for over 25 years. And we take the research and the breakthroughs that they really come out with, and then we pressure test them in the class that we have at Microsoft. Because at our scale, we have so many different places where we can try out all of these different new ideas and really prove that they add value to customers. And, uh, and then we deploy them through Azure AI to all the third party customers and really sort of write everything up that way. Um, so we've really been focused on how we make this team, how we really democratize AI so that anybody who's on the skill level can really get going with things and can really become productive with it. Um, we're, we're really excited about how comprehensive our options are. You can go from Azure Machine Learning all the way through to suits of cognitive services in the whole section of the team and find something that's going to work for your skill level, for your business, for what you need all along the way. So you mentioned AI for all skill levels. What are we doing to help people that are really getting started build AI? Sure. So we've come up with a lot of things in Azure Machine Learning. Uh, to really sort of make it simple for people regardless of where you are. Uh, at the one end, if you're in a, uh, a sort of a no-code experience, you can use uh, automated machine learning. And we now have a user experience where you can go and bring your data set and predict the column that you can specify the column you want to have predicted and generate an AI model for you without actually having to understand the logistic regression or the need of regularization of the parameters or anything you might need to do under the cover. And then we can sort of go from there to our designer, which is sort of a, a low-code experience where you can sort of create drag and drop. I want to bring my data, I want to split it into a couple of different sets, I want to train on this, I want to test on this. Again, with parameters for each individual box, I want to drag and drop. All the way to a code first experience where you can use a notebook directly integrated into Azure Machine Learning Studio where you can see all of your data and all of your experiments, and even all the experiments that your, your team and, and other people you're collaborating with are doing all in one spot. And so we're really trying to make it easy, regardless of where you are sort of on that spectrum, we've got an offering that's really going to make it easy for you. Another thing that we've been focusing a lot on is how we make it easier for enterprises to manage all of the different data that, that they, all different models that they have. And so one of the things we used to hear a lot is customers would say, I'm struggling to get my first model in production. Now what they're telling us is, I have 100 models in production, and I can't keep track of them, I can't manage them. And so that's really where MLOps comes in really help with the management, the deployment, the getting from the data scientists all the way into production in a really unique manner of doing that. And one of the last things that I want to tell you about is we've added R support. This is something we hear a lot of feedback from our customers of, hey, we want R support for our, you know, we have only these 50 models and we think that R support, so we've added R support directly into that machine learning. Now. This is awesome. It feels like we're doing stuff end to end for machine learning practitioners. <coughs> But what, like some people might be like, hey, you know, AI isn't for me. What are we doing to enhance existing applications of AI? So that's one of the great things about suite of cognitive services that makes it really easy. Even if you don't know how to create your own AI model, you can use these services really right off the shelf, just like that, any sort of web application you can. So one of the things we announced earlier this year is Personalize, and we just announced that being in TA. Personalize is a reinforcement learning based system that really helps you connect users to their content. We use it in places like Xbox where I want to recommend what games you play next based on the things that you've already done. And so that's available for people who want to optimize you know, different flows on their website and things like that. But we have so much new stuff coming out in the common services. Uh, in speech, we announced that we can now build custom speech models based on your organization's Office 365 data. So what we do is we take all of the public groups and information that's available to everyone in your organization and then we build models for how to go from speech to text on top of that. And that way, when you have, you know, jargon that's specific to your company, you know, here at Microsoft, we talk about Kubernetes all the time. And a speech system is not going to know what that is, how to spell it, it's going to recognize it as something really weird. But being able to train on your Office 365 data, now you can get that directly, you know, 
really customized to your business and do a lot of cool things with that. Another cool thing we offer that we uh, release in speech is custom neural voice, which is now where you can take, uh, you, you can do a synthesized voice based on, you know, say your company's mascot or something like that, so if you want to get call center answered by your company's mascot, um, lots of cool things like that. Um, and then even all the way to the box side, you know, we, we now have bot composer, and this is a really great low-code experience for being able to sort of wire up your box and create them. Um, you can go all the way to Power Virtual Agents, which is a sort of no-code experience for ACK5. So again, kind of go end to end, regardless of sort of your skill level, we've got some applications really going to fit in so that's what you be using your business in your application. I love how we're focusing on the actual users and the challenges that they face and how we actually solve them. I bet there's a lot of customer demands coming in. What are some things that we're focusing on based on customer demand? One of the things we hear about from our customers a lot is they have all of this data in their organization and they want to figure out how they can make sense of it. And so we call this area knowledge mining. And it's really trying to figure out how can you use AI to extract all the insights from the data that the customers already have and make it useful for them. And so we took what we called Azure Search and we rebranded it to Azure Cognitive Search, really highlighting that that's the big thing that you're doing is you're extracting the key entities from it, you're extracting the you know, places and people and things, you're translating it to different languages if you need to, you're understanding what's going on in the images, and then you're making that searchable. You're showing graphs of how these different things relate to each other, and it's really exposing all of the information that is locked up inside of all the data that you customers have. You come to an oil company that says, I have all this data you know, from the 80s and from Arabic about all these oil fields, and I want to be able to use it. And so now you can either come to search, you can get all that information well, this is amazing. Any final thoughts? I mean, we're really excited about this community and where it's been going and, and really how it's grown. And I uh, really look forward to seeing all the great things that will come from this globally community. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Thank you so much for being here at the Global AI Food Camp. We are so grateful that you're here. Back to you. Thanks so much for that update. At the last Global AI Night, we launched the Global AI Community, a community where we can connect, learn, and share together. We're also really excited to see that during this Global AI Bootcamp, we've got together as that Global AI community to pull this content together that you will see today. Also, it's been really nice to see that lots of local Global AI Nights have been happening. If you're interested in finding out more about them, go to the Global AI Community website. I know what it's all about today, but I want to give you a glimpse of the future of the global AI community and the upcoming events. We're about to announce the global <coughs> AI tour starting in March and ending in May. And this global AI tour is going to be a series of events that will take place over the next three months. There will be online events, there will be local events, there will be a lot of great videos, all organized by the global community for you. We hope you enjoyed today learning all about AI. If you want to learn more in the future, check out the Global AI Community website. And mark your calendars for the next event, the Global AI Tour, starting in March 2020. Thanks so much for joining us and have an amazing day. So that's the official one. That's the video. I basically realized that when I'm going to speak, they say, no, let me do something better. This is the lower one. And as I said at the beginning, I was trying to do the keynote. I was trying to do a review of one of the tools that we have right now, of the scenes of the car. Then I realized there's a couple of speakers talking about this. So I want to do a different keynote today because, because, because it's slowly, so you need to like it. So, for example, how many of you are using AI today? Raise your hand. Okay, not so many. You know what? It's fine, but you are wrong. Everybody is using AI today. How many people are using Office today? Office is fine. Azure, Windows, AI is everything. AI is any time that you send an email, there is a process in the back of Office analyzing your email to try to understand what are you talking about so they can correlate this with your meetings and the work that you are doing so you are going to have insights. Be trying to trying to identify if you are being productive or not by Microsoft Insights. Every time you schedule a meeting, 
But you create Teams meetings and you invite 10 people, but only seven connect to the meeting. There is an AI process in the back of office trying to analyze it. Hey, are you meeting successful or not? Or if you're scheduled meetings and people are not connecting on time, you're going to cut some trust numbers saying that, hey, this is good or not. You have a recurrent meeting every week and nobody connects. It's everywhere. Even in the Amazon Windows update, because everybody loves Windows update, I just canceled one this morning because, you know, when you are going to come together, you can say, this is a good moment to update. Everything behind Windows update, you have an AI process trying to identify which are your working hours, so Windows is not going to install updates while you are working. It seems to be a, it seems to be a good idea, but still, you know, Windows update do whatever they want. So, everybody's kind of using AI today, even if you don't realize that you are using AI. And I am asking this because I like to tell the stories in the personal side, the Royce Royce in this. This is my cast, this is one of the two cast that we have. This is the Canadian cast, the other cast we have been from, from Spain. So this is Spanish cast, and this is the Canadian. And by the way, now they have two cats from different countries. You can even, you can even hear how they are wrong and different. So the Spanish are the local, but this is kind of different. And he really likes to bring his friends home. So I get back home and I found at my house small birds, live mice. Then we play with my daughter the, 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 the game, if it's a dead squirrel or a dead mouse, which is an amazing game to play when you're with your daughter and so on, but your wife is not very happy about this. So, we started to, I started, my wife said we need to do something with the cat. We, we are not allowed to cut dead animal in our house because they smell bad, one of the things you want know. So I decided, okay, you know what? I know when my cat gets in outside, so I will put the camera and I will start to try to track my cat and I put the time to when my cat is getting in and out and also to see if he's bringing a friend or not to the house. How many of you already seen this from me today? Okay, so I usually talk about how when you need to build something like this, when you need to build an image recognition system, you have a lot of tools to do this. At the end, when you start to play around, you realize that the, the tool that you need to create is a deep network network. At the end, it's not very easy to do, so you spend a lot of time. You, you basically learn that in order to analyze a, a picture like this for a dog, we can see this and we can understand that this is a dog, but for a computer, this is not a dog, just this is more part is a huge set of rise of numbers, so you need to work with these numbers, you need to do patterns, so you create an AI computer system that is basically going to apply different the DNA that is going to apply different layers on top of this, and the first layer is going to basically shrink and clean the, the, the edges of the pictures, I'm going to identify the face, and I'm going to identify the spot, to identify the eyes and the nose, and at the end I'm going to have a model which are going to allow me to identify mapping as well. This is a two-year-old job. So, I'm not I'm probably seeing this before when I see this. So, right now, this, this was happening two years ago. We are struggling to basically identify the difference between the mapping and the chihuahua. It was complicated. And two years later, we said, okay, we did this. We can read the dust. But then, we find something like this. <laughs> and this is a real story. This is a farmer back in, I don't remember the name of the city in India. We were having some issues with monkeys. The monkey will end up stealing his corporate, stealing something from him, and not you know, plants or whatever. So, because monkeys, monkeys are afraid to tiger, he decided to paint his dog as a tiger. And it works. It's freaking works. So, he seems to be happy right now. And you know what? I decided, okay, I will see if our system, which are smart enough right now to identify a monkey and chihuahua, can get a sense to identify this as a dog. And no, the computer vision service, and this is, I did it yesterday, the computer vision service that we have in the Azure, it says that this is a cat. <laughs> so we are here today, this is AI today. When we finally realize to identify Marcus and Chihuahua, we find people painting dogs and tigers. So this is the next step of AI. And this is not just Microsoft. I test this also in other platform, like Google, and Google say, look, hey, yes, this is an animal. The dog is an animal. Not easy, but you know what? It's a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bad tiger. Again, I am going to share the links. You are going to, you want, you are going to test this image with you. So it's a tricky moment for us. So this is the moment that you put this amazing picture here and someone sitting looking at the, the horizon and sinking. So can we trust the AI? If we see this kind of thing, can we really trust the system that is going to basically not be able to identify a dog from a tiger? This is this is making you see. This is get, get to see about how we, we appear because 
in what country are these people? How many of you know this story? How many of you know police law? So this was one of the top three master, uh, world champion master who playing golf. Golf seemed to be a very freaking complicated game. So two years ago, I said, no, I'm sorry, three years ago, he plays against uh, one of the most massive computers in the era, with the Google AlphaGo, and he lost. Basically, they played to the left three, he won one, he lost three, and basically the one that he lost, it was because at some moment, the computer did a very serious thing. But then he lost, and we were basically, he, 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 he didn't give it about this. He decided to retire this year, because he, he realized that the AI becomes so freaking Intelligent that he's not going to play anymore. He's not going to fight. And this is a very, very smart guy. So you find that in one hand we have uh, people who can, who have a system who can basically uh, make a connection between a dog and a tiger, then we have the other mode, then how many of you seen this? How many of you seen the latest bottom dynamics video about the, the board of doing gymnastics? This is freaking complicated. When he's doing the jump, the physics the jump, if you ever done gymnastic, the technique that you need to have to do this is very, very complicated. There is a lot of techniques to do this. And they are doing this with the robot. So this part, the jump, makes you think, oh my god, this is not just about a smart AI. This is about force. This is about a system. This is about a lot of things. So you say, oh, this is a very smart AI. But then you see the background. So you to see the good and the bad. To see that the good. I know that if I go around, that's going to be me. So again, how do you address AI? How do you want to do this? You need to figure out what are we There are different levels of AI, so we need to figure out which is the best, which is the one that is going to really, really affect us. So let's sample it. Let's talk about Office. Can we trust what that is coming behind office? Can we trust Windows updates? I don't trust Windows updates. My 10 years of experience saying that Windows updates is going to do whatever they want. Like office can be better, but you need to choose this kind of thing. And we start to face issues with, okay, but AI is everywhere. And it's not that about the boards or very smart computers doing this. How many of you are aware of all of the things that are normally happening around face detection, face recognition? There are places that basically, uh, I, I, never, I haven't been in to the US in the last month, but it seems that they are basically forcing you to have your faces coming there. So how legal is this? I know that there are some places in Europe and in the States and other places that they are about, uh, they basically say that we are not going to legalize this, or the president says, yes, go for it. So how are you going to do this? I don't know. Ah, that's what I mean. You need to have Benzola to this. You don't have Benzola? You are not in the latest trend, so here it is like Yola. When I did my first set of slides, my daughter said, Why did you put so many baby Yolas in your slides? Uh, and you know to know the Mandalorian. How many of you are watching the Mandalorian? How many of you know baby Yola? Okay, more people know baby Yola than the Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> Another way that, and I'm going to show you a couple of examples, we don't have much time, so I'm going to do this fast. Go there. So, another way that, uh, AI is affecting us. Everybody is talking about how AI is going to kill jobs. I personally think that AI is not killing jobs. It's not displacing people. AI is helping us to be more with people. So an example. One of them, when you start talking about this, one of the first examples I will say that call centers are going to be eliminated and are going to be fully, fully replaced by AI. Yes and no. There are a lot of very smart people in call centers. What, people, what we are trying to do is somehow we're trying to encourage these people, we're trying to promote the knowledge, to, to get the best of these people's knowledge to use this in the in the call center. So how are we going to do this? There are a couple of very good sessions in Microsoft Ignite that you can watch online around how we can improve the service to do this. How we can improve the, the quality of service to do this? How many of you like to talk to an agent via the phone? Okay, I was very worried that someone raised your hand because I didn't have a reply for that. It's not a good experience because we hate that. We hate talking to someone and five minutes later we are going to go to talk to someone else. So we need to explain everything again and everything again and then it is not a happy moment. Also, if you have an accent like mine, sometimes I get this, I don't understand you. Yes, I know I, My wife doesn't understand me. You need to work for the years. So this is not new for me. 
And usually when you call a call center, you're not calling call because you are happy. Oh, yes, Rosas, I am calling you because you are the best man in the world. But we can use technology to improve this. We can use technology, for example, to analyze the real time the voices of the call center, to see what we are doing, to give the call center reason more information to do this, to, to make the experience better. So take a look at these sessions. And by the way, a couple of these sessions are going to be live, coming in the to the January here. So you can take a look and see how we can do technology to, to, to become better at this. And there are a lot of things that we can do with you here. Yes, more things. You need to laugh. Yes. And then we can do a lot of things using AI. So in example, we need to choose our buttons. We have very, very smart people, like data scientists. And we, and sometimes it's hard for, for us to work with different people because we need to connect in some of data scientists and wedding cake designers, which is a common point between these two. What they need to do, what they need most, they need more layers. Again, this is a technical job because data scientists, when they are creating a neural network, they have layers, many layers. And I, I am not an expert here, but it seems that these guys want to do layers, layers, layers. <laughs> but it's all about the people. It's all about how we can connect the dots between the two of you. How many of you read the news about this? There are companies with, which are starting to see to do recruiting based on AI, which is the worst idea ever, if you ask me. But this is my personal opinion. Some of these companies are trying to implement the system that when you are being uh, when you are being interviewed, based on the interview, you're going to have a camera, they do something with you, and they're going to analyze your emotion, the, if you have any response time or whatever, when they are answering your, these questions. And based on that, they're going to pay the profile of you. That's, if you ask me, that's not good, because all of this is based on data. How are you going to analyze this data? So, for example, I am a Latin guy. Uh, father from Italy, I live in Argentina, I live in Spain, I came from here, I use my hands a lot. I speak a lot, I'm very passionate, and I can even talk about passion, about something like boring, like whatever, like listening to my daughter's uh, I don't know, end of year celebration, because we need to be there and cheer it, and in the room, I say, oh, I'm here. But hey, I'm talking about my car, and I'm very passionate. If you go back to Northern Europe, and you go to back to Finland, these guys don't have any kind of mask in their faces. <laughs> But that doesn't mean they are bad or not. They don't basically react in the faces. So how you are going to measure an interview when you're asking the question between me and the northern European people? And by the way, this is places that I know. I'm sure that all around the globe is going to be also different with Asian people, Australia, Brazilian, South American, whatever. So this is tricky. How are we going to do this? This is also what's happening in AI right now and we need to see, okay, how is this or not? If I am going to make an interview and someone says that I never going to use this, I will say, no, I don't want to move. That's it. That's basically it. For me, but again, this is my point of view. So, what's next? When you think about this, well, how we are using AI, is how we are basically stepping up and using the things that we are using, and I thought we keep this short. We are basically right now in the second web of AI, which is applying AI for business. But in the next couple of years, we are going to start to do uh, perception AI and we're going to do one to understand. How many of you know the IoT, Internet of Things? You probably heard about this, you probably know about IoT. So the next big generation in the Internet is going to be the perception. Internet of perception, which is going to be us interacting with devices much more advanced than the, than the focus rate or the coverage or something like this that allows us to give our information in real time. What we are looking at, how we are feeling in that, is going to be a huge, huge revolution. And by the way, I will share these slides and even the rest have a couple of books that you probably if you have time also you need to read about this because this is people who see how we're going to change. And I like these these charts where basically we know, basically on a couple of streets, this is in Boston, that from 2040, 2050, machines are going to be smart as humans. And when I say smart as human, it's basically saying that they are going to be able to correlate information like we do. We are very good. Chatbots today are amazing, but they don't have context. They don't understand how to connect the dots. They don't, they don't understand what's happening in the, in the context. So I gave an example. My daughter says that Alexa is silly because she's watching a movie and she asks, Hey, Alexa, who's that? And Alexa, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're silly. You don't understand this. I understand it better like this because I know that my daughter is watching a movie and she's looking at this character there so I can say what happened. So all of these kinds of things 
are going to happen in the next 30 years. And it makes us think, what's it going to happen? How we are going to walk? How we are going to live in those places? What is going to happen? Now, by the way, I'm planning to live at least one kind of 50 years, so I'm going to live all of this. This is, this is my plan. My wife is not sure that I'm going to do that, but, but that's my plan. And this is happening like this. And it's somehow, this is the afterglow stages. Once Google beats this in all, they did something which is even better. Is it because in the next year, the next year, they get into the new generation of the computer, of the smart, of the crazy smart computer that they have, that learn autonomous how to play Go and beats the previous one. They didn't, they didn't train this computer. They just said, play Go and learn. So we are going to be here. What is happening in 2070 with the very smart computer with super intelligence? I don't know. If you want to know how this works, get more baby Yoda because we need to do this. And this is not easy to make a path to the ABC PowerPoint. So that's, that's my intelligent level here. I don't know what we're in the day. But make you see what is going to happen. And this is all good. So what to be fun, this is supposed to be fast and sorry. And we need to start to print this. So a couple of considerations here, right? When we are talking about the AI, it's very, very important to see how we are going to do this. How we are going to do the government? How we are going to do the policy around here? What are we trying to do this? Ethics. Ethics is very, very important. We're going to have a session today. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to talk about. I attend a lot of sessions around ethics in AI because we are dealing with data. And again, if you create a system to analyze emotion based on Latin people, Italian people, the result that you are going to have if you test this with Northern people, Northern European people, is going to be different. So, are you going to do this data bias? Are you going to work like this? Also, right now we have an issue. Everybody deploying with us machine learning is kind of a black box. You get to results, but you don't know how to get to these results. So, how transparent is that? If I get to get to a loan to a bank and the bank says, no, you're not a broker, why? Because I have an AI box here that analyzes your profile and says, you're not a broker. But why? We are working on trying to get there. We are working on trying to understand what is happening. And by the way, machine learning is complicated, and deep learning is freaking complicated. Then you need to talk about safety. You need to talk about how you are going to impact society. How many of you know the company's analytic uh, scenario, or race, or whatever? And these guys basically use a lot of very good profile data to manage a lot of different things. To, 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 this is crazy scenario. So how are you going to impact society when you do something amazing? And by the way, Every time that someone is talking about these good or bad cases, there is a developer in the back trying to design support. So you need to see, I, I want to, do you want to be a developer or not? So, how many of you have seen Procent 2? This is Procent, so again, you need to be deep learning. <laughs> and to see us to get this, but hey, let's go. And how is it that? So basically, I will try to track my cat. I was trying to track my cat. I am in the state of, okay, then I need to track to see what's happening. So this is my cat there, uh, in a, one of the cameras that I have at home. He, he's eating, and when he starts to move, oh, yes, that's my cat, he's tracking there. So what I am doing right now, I am tracking my cat when he enters in and out of my cat to see if he's bringing, I don't track, I don't cut, I can't track right now if he's bringing something in his mouth, like the mice, the bird, or whatever, but I know when he enters in and out, so I will review this, Moments of the day to see if he's having something there. And hey, I don't do this at all, kind of fun. I hope I'm not doing anything wrong there. But it's something that you can have fun to do this. And that's my daughter, that's my wife in the back, saying, you know, my God, what are you going to do next? That's my life. And we are 15, 10, 15. So thank you very much. We are going to start and we're going to split this. Remember, come to talk to us in the room if you want to have a conversation. There are a lot of great amazing sessions here and I will see you around. Thanks.